What is up, ladies and gentlemen? How are you all doing today? Let's get that out of my physical. And uh, welcome to another Neural DSP live stream. How's everybody doing? DMC Guitars, what's up, my dude? Uh, Michael D8393. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I'm glad you're enjoying the music. Luis Matos, what's up? How are you doing? It's beautiful Wednesday. All right. So here we are, another week of Q&A. Aloha, Zach. How are you doing, my friend? Things going well with the mixing? Uh, let's see. Tyler Britton. Hey, how's it going, dude? Not much. Not much. Just uh, enjoying the day. Been restringing a couple of guitars for a video and uh, yeah, just working on some cool stuff. Modern Vintage. Thanks for coming back, man. How you doing? Carol, how you doing? All right. Travis Jures. What's up, dude? Uh... Travis asks, uh, can I play my Fortinatas plug-in, uh, the NTS, through my Boss Katana? I've, you know, to be very honest, I don't, I've, I've not used the Boss Katana before. Um, I don't know. I did. You got me. Um, if it's a plug-in, if it has a power, amps, uh, power amp uh, section that you can run through without going through a preamp section, uh, then yes. Yes, you can. So... We are here for another round of Q&A, so go ahead and put your questions in the in the chat, bracket Q bracket, so that way I can more easily pick it out when I see them. Um, let's see. But yeah, so. Seemed like a lot of people had some good questions not a problem, Travis. Anytime. Uh, seems like a lot of people had some questions about the uh, um, the 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 plug-in through the cabinet section sort of thing. So if we need to, we can always go through that again as well, and I can kind of explain any sp uh, any particular questions you had on that. Because uh, I feel like some people may have overcomplicated the signal flow that I was that I was using, but. We, we can get to that if that's something we want to get uh, clarified today. Uh, Modern Vintage asks, where can I find the metal presets from last week, LAM, periphery, etc.? Um, so those are going to be in the um, the bit.ly link. Those are, and the bit.ly link is in the description of every, every video. I'll go ahead and link that. Um, let's see. I could probably actually find that real quick for you if I need to, Bitly. Um, got it. Log in. Uh, but those are in a, in a drive folder. I put them in there uh, usually every week. I try to make it every week, but sometimes I forget. But here we go. So I'm just going to copy that and then put that in the, in the chat for you. All right, so that's that's the Bitly link. That'll take you to my drive folder. So that's where all of the presets are for Parallax, NTS, Faceless, NTS, Pliny, all of all of the above. Uh, let's see. Uh, Zach Manzano asks, do you have a usual process when bussing guitars, rhythm, leads, etc., on separate buses? Uh, yes. Okay, so and, and it also is dependent on the section. Uh, it is dependent on the um, sort of the top-down approach. Um, I'm sure that I'm sure that everybody has heard top-down approach at this point. Um, but basically, what it is is just that, like, um, so this is the the example that I used for um, the live neural DSP plugins. And uh, basically what I wanted to do is I wanted to affect all of the, the grit guitars because if we, if we solo these ones out real quick, we can listen to the, the tone. Uh, oops. 
And then when we listen to the next section, it's a very, very different tonal quality. And instead of putting individual plugins on every single one of these channels, I just had all of the, the, the dirty or the heavier guitars going to this GTR heavy bus. So that way I could just throw a single EQ pre compressor, et cetera, on this one, uh, this one aux, aux bus versus doing it to every single individual channel. And same with the, the dirt. I wanted to track that a little bit differently. So that's what I did. Same with the leads. The leads I had going to a different, uh, different bus altogether. This is going to GTR dual, which is up here, which I don't have any processing on right now. I actually bypassed, uh, I actually bypassed all of my previous settings, um, just because the, uh, the sounds I was getting from, from the actual recorded guitars were, were different than I normally use. So I actually did have a lot of fun recording all of this stuff, but, uh, anyway, so that's, that's generally like the top down approach is just that I want to affect all of these, in, all of these tracks, um, but use the fewest amount of plugins possible. So I'm going to route it all to a bus. Um, but that's about, that's generally the way that I'll, 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 I'll do that is just grouping types together. So that way I can affect them all. Um, but yeah, usually like rhythms and leads I'll do to separate buses. Uh, Carol asks what sample rate is best for home recording? Um, there's a lot of debate online between 441, uh, 882, 96, etc. I, I pretty much have only been doing 441, uh, for all of these recordings. And I think they sound, sound good. And, and there are scientific reasons to do, uh, 882 or 96 or, or whatever. But as far as I'm concerned, um, 441 has sounded really, really good so far. And, and it really hasn't messed up any of my, uh, any of my recordings at all. So like, yeah, I'll just, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll usually stick 441. You may go to 48 either way. You know, it's not, uh, it's, it's not too big of a deal. Uh, Tyler Britton asks any chance on getting numerical values on each parameter of the plugin so we can see exactly where things are dialed in. That's a really good question. I actually saw your post in the uh, the Neural DSP users group, and I think that that got to uh, the guys in Neural. So I'm not sure if that's gonna, they're going to do that, but I think that that's a pretty good uh, uh, pretty good suggestion. Um, all right, I your name is in Cyrillic, and I don't know how to pronounce it. I am so sorry. But the question is: Are Neural DSP going to release an update for Archetype with more presets from different artists? I really love presets in Nameless, though. Um, I don't think that they're working on any additional presets. Um, if you go to that bit.ly link, you can find any of the ones that I've made so far. And I'm going to try and keep updating that as I go along and maybe, you know, try and, and improve on some of the ones that I've done already. Um, but I don't think they're specifically working on something quite like that. I know they're working on a, a update to bring MIDI support to the plugins, but uh, I'm not sure about additional presets. Um... Uh, Luis Matos asks, are we going to see delay and reverb on NTS and Nameless? I'm not sure. I don't think we are, but I, you know, I, I, I could be wrong. I'm not, I'm not exactly hundred percent sure what their next update's going to look like. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure. Uh, Modern Vintage asks, any reason why there aren't Frederick Meshuga presets for the Nameless plugin? Is it too close conflicting contractually? Um, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure actually. Um, I, I, I don't know if that's something that I can, uh, exactly, <laughs> uh, talk about, uh, plugin alley says, how do you post on Facebook? Uh, and what version of Reaper is this? And says 48 K. Yeah. So Carol, uh, plugin alley is, is recommending that you use 48 K. And I mean, I wouldn't disagree. Um, I've been using 40 for one, but you can use 48. I, you know, it's, it's, it's nothing that I really, sp I, I don't particularly lose a lot of sleep on this answer. Um, because as long as my music is sounding good, then that's really all that I care about. Uh, Batu Cartel. Hey, what's up, dude? How's it going? Uh, 
<laughs> so Michael D responds to Plugin Alley. It's Pro Tools 12, uh, and it is. Um, Plugin Alley likes to likes to troll my 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 live streams. He's a buddy of mine. So uh, let's see. Okay, moving on. Uh, Luca Perdellini asks, uh, can we use a MIDI foot MIDI foot controller to select presets when playing live? So that is something that is coming. Um, Luca, um, they are working on bringing MIDI support to the the plugins. Um, I'm not sure exactly when that up plugin will be delivered or when the update will be delivered, but it is something they are working on currently. Uh, okay, so Felix asks... Um, would you do a demo showing the guitar amps along with analog pedals, overdrives, fuzz, etc.? I would love to. I, I, I really actually do. Um, I'm going to try and get in contact with, uh, with, uh, with the guys over at Fortin. I have a, I have a friend of mine who works there. Um, and I definitely want to bring in and compare and contrast like the, the Fortin plugin, uh, uh, the, the, um, the plugin versions of the pedals to the analog ones. So yes, absolutely. A hundred percent. Uh, Modern Vintage asks, "What are your favorite high gain amps for metal?" Um, if we're talking, uh, if we're talking analog uh, amps, I mean, I've always been a big fan of Mesa Boogie fifty one fifty. Obviously, is is a is a popular choice. Um, I don't know. There's like there's. It used to be that there were only like a handful of good options, right? Like when, when I first started getting into metal, it's like, okay, you're either in the Mesa Boogie camp or you're a Marshall guy or you're a Fender guy. Like maybe there's like some other like couple, you know, off brands that I can't think of, or, you know, there's probably brands that I'm not thinking of. But anyway, like there are so many out there now, like that I, that I, like, I think that you can just kind of like pick and choose as you please. Cause there's definitely some really like cool stuff out there, but I, I would definitely say that the, um, um. Yeah, yeah. Mesa Boogie fifty one fifty. Those are like good go tos. Like really good go tos. Uh, let's see. Uh, Luca asks any suggestion for a controller. Uh, so I don't have any suggestions yet because I actually really want to try them out for myself first before I give any, um, uh, any recommendations quite yet. Oh. Um, but I've been looking at the MIDI commander, um, cause I've seen some good, uh, good reviews on that one. Um, but haven't had any experience with it yet. So I, you know, again, I don't want to make any suggestions just yet because I do want to get my hands on a few and try them out. So, um, that, that will, that will be, that will be coming. So, uh, once, once that update is in place, um, you can definitely expect another video on how to integrate your MIDI foot controller or whatever to, um, to your plugin for, for sure. That's, that's, uh, an inevitability. <laughs> awesome. Uh, let's see. Plugin Alley. Neural is fantastic at generating playthrough content. Will we be seeing more of the procedure on the roster come? Wait, hang on a second. Uh, see more of the producers on the roster come on and describe use of these plugins on current records. Plugin Alley, I definitely am going to see that uh, happen. Um, yeah, so I am in talks with a producer currently, and I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be um, uh, bringing on some additional ones and reaching out and just to you know spice it up, bring some cool stuff in. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I'm actually next door to uh, one of their artists, so, you know, when at some point he wants to come through and build, make some, make some content with me, you know, he's uh, more than welcome to. Um, let's see. Zach Manzano asks, uh, dabbled with room correction software. I have, and I do. Um, so I use Sonarworks currently, and it's been uh, uh, definitely a, uh, a game changer for me. Uh, personally, it's, it's like, like my, oh yeah, you know, what? I'll, I'll actually just, I'll just show you, uh, what my room correction looks like. And you, yeah, you guys won't be able to hear this, but like, so this is my corrected room. This is my normal room EQ. So I have this like 
and and it's because I'm on these JBLs, they're like consumer grade, but I got this like mad bump at like, I don't know, 40 or 50 hertz and a big dip at like 80. So and it's, it's all over the place. So um, I kind of have to, I, I have to use room correction for it currently. So, you know, at some point I'm going to, I'm going to upgrade in, uh, in, in my plugins or not my plugins, but my, uh, my monitors. Um, but we'll, we'll see what, which direction I go with that. Uh, Luis asks, uh, how is the best way to use the input gate and the Zool on nameless? Um, it's always dependent on what the section sounds like. I would, I would say, um, who that's a good question. Uh, Cause I don't know if I can, I'll, I'll try and pull this off with this, um, with this setup here. Um, let's see. Okay, so I recorded the DI for for this last part, and I'll see see if I can kind of dial it in. Like, I would say that the gate's probably going to be the best for like any sort of like staccato. Uh, Staccato kind of stuff. Um, dang, it, I don't know if I have a good, good example. Whatever, we'll we'll we'll, we'll give it a shot. We'll give it a shot. We'll just go with the nameless sweet mono. Okay, so I don't know if you noticed, but uh, I kind of wanted to show you what the extremes are going to look like. So you pump the you pump the gates up to absolute full, and it cuts off all of your signal. But then once you start backing them off, you're going to get the additional um, uh, you're going to get the additional signal coming through. So like basically, as long as the as long as the gates aren't aren't choking off your your signal, like then then it's going to work. Um, Let's see. David Lloyd asks, what framework does Neural DSP use to write its software? What language is used? And what is the most useful library you have all taken advantage of? That is going to be a question for uh, Doug. So I'm going to have Doug on the stream at one point. We're going to do a Skype call so that way you guys can ask him the technical questions. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll announce that in the neural DSP group and on, uh, and I'll, and I'll title, title the, uh, um, the stream that I'll have him on. So that'll, that'll be planned in advance and I'll make sure to take notes on these questions. So that way we make sure to ask him, uh, WP asks, uh, opinion on Loki base versus self-recorded through dark glass or parallax. I mean, I'm, a, I've always been a sucker for, uh, for actually recorded, you know, self-recorded, uh, plugins i mean wp everything that i've done so far has been through dark glass or uh, parallax so like all three of these bass tracks are all parallax just a di straight into parallax <laughs> fun with that riff actually uh yeah so so generally when i'm when i'm doing any of these videos as long as i have a bass on hand to do the recording with i will generally go with that um but as far as like using um uh using bass vsts like 
I'm not opposed to that at all. Like a bunch of my videos have been with like the submission base, the or submission submission Euro base too. Um, so I think that as as long as the the as long as it sounds good, I'm I'm down with whatever. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, David Lloyd asks, any plans to release any type of digital drop tuning so that I don't have to get my guitar restrung and re it every time I want to play Gent? I kind of doubt it. Um, knowing the release schedule, I, I don't see that being a feature of any of the upcoming uh, plugins, but um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure that that's going to be a thing. Um, to tell the truth, I'm not sure of, of any software that I would recommend either, to to be very honest. So um, I'll keep that in mind, though, and I'll try I'll try and answer you. I'll, I'll try and answer that uh, later on. Uh, John Masiel, what's up, dude? Uh, asks, will Neural ever team up with Submission Audio? The Euro bass line sounds great with the Neural line. Just seems like a cool match made in heaven, just like uh, just like Dingwall with the uh, Dark Glass. Yes. I mean, I would like to. I want to. Ermin Hamidovic is a dope guy, and I would definitely want to uh, want to have a conversation with him and see, you know, what we can come up with. Um, uh, Modern Vintage, do you have a Nameless Meshuga preset? If not, can you recommend the closest one? Is it the default preset? Thanks. You know what, Modern Vintage? Uh, I uh, so that that was actually a consideration because I want to do another four styles of metal. Uh, metal guitar uh, pretty soon and that was like one of my top things that I was thinking well we have the nameless amp so we might as well go with four styles of metal guitar with a nameless so I'll, I'll try and get you your Meshuggah preset I like I've, I've kind of messed around with some of the presets that are already in there but I like to I, li I like to figure stuff out on my own so we'll uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get you something Uh, let's see. Modern Vintage also asks, how would you describe that mashuga like sound in audio terms? Uh, quacky, heavily distorted, gated, etc. Um, whew. Everybody has their own adjectives to describe uh, audio, don't they? Um, I mean, like, it's definitely bright, heavy, monolithic kind of tone. Like, I don't know if you guys ever listened to to video game soundtracks, but uh, one of my favorite tracks by Frederick um, was on the Wolfenstein uh, game that came out. I think it was like 2015 or 16 or something like that. Um, go check it out. It's 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 so absolutely heavy, and it's got it's got that Meshuggah vibe, but it's also fairly like industrial. So if you want, like as far as like that very throaty kind of grindy heavy genty frederick sound like that's like one of my best examples of like something that's just so stereotypically frederick it's 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 a dope track and i love it um let's see Uh, modern, modern vintage says, looking forward to the preset. Yours are unreal. I appreciate that, man. I, I really do. Um, I feel, I feel really, uh, really thankful that, I, that I get to do what I get to do, you know, cause I like to, I like to help you guys out and I like to be able to, you know, kind of give away these sorts of, uh, these sorts of bits of information because I know that I had to spend a lot of time, uh, <clears throat> searching on my own for this sort of stuff so having a resource open to to doing that is is uh is very cool it's very very cool like I'm, I'm very excited that that neural has asked me to do this kind of stuff because um yeah it just fits in with with what i do like i got to teach guitar for like 10 years and it was one of the most like fulfilling parts of my job that i could do so yeah uh <laughs> modern vintage says funny how genty was the last and most accurate adjective it's very true i mean well that's that's why like uh that that's where like the 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 the, the moniker came from was because that that gent is that onomatopoeia for like that that word that sounds like it is like gent 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 gent, gent, gent like uh, yeah yeah so it's cool it's very cool so, 
Uh, let's see. Do we have more questions? We seem to be running dry on questions a little bit. So I am going to be doing some some interviews with producers, and um, I actually want to open up the 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 floor to questions from the audience specifically. So um, I'll be posting about that in the Facebook group mostly, and on my personal page. If any of you are my friends on my Facebook, um, but I would really want to get involved like you guys, because I can kind of try and ask the question of what, uh, you know, what I can, I can try and guess what you guys want to hear from these interviews, but I really want to be able to just kind of know what you guys are looking to get out of the, uh, out of, out of the end of these producers. So, um, that's something that's going to be really interesting. So I'm, in, um, yeah, I might as well tell you guys, like I'm in talks with Re uh, Carson Slovak right now to do my next interview, and I just got to schedule that up with him. And uh, if you guys had questions about that here, I mean, like, if you guys had questions right now, I could definitely take that down. So, um, yeah, bring bring it on. Um, we'll get that going pretty soon. So, all right. So we got more questions coming up. <laughs> Felix asks, uh, so to follow up on the pedal video, uh, any plans for a heavy fuzz pedal, uh, digital obviously, from Neural DSP? Um, this is what I feel like I'm missing most in the digital realm. Uh, heavy fuzz pedal? Uh... I don't think that they're working on anything specifically for a heavy fuzz pedal, like solo. Like they're mostly working on a lot of like amp sims and stuff like that still. So like that's that's kind of the realm that they're they're hitting the most. But of course, you you know, you can turn on and off any component within the plugin. So obviously when you get those plugins, you'll be able to mix and match. So like, you know, like one of my favorite things is like taking like the hex drive and putting that in front of the archetype Pliny amp sim i think it sounds just monstrously good um uh let's see uh john masiel says we want their presets we want their irs i know i know we all do they you know it's mashuga mashuga is mashuga is life uh mashuga is love um Tyler Britton asks, uh, will we will we get the ability to finally tweak the EQ and delay reverb pedals in the Pliny archetype to get in between the number of values they jump to? Uh, maybe just make it shift and click, just a thought. Ability to finally take. Get in between the number values they jump to? Well, let's see. Because I want to say... I'm 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 checking this out myself. So, oh, you're talking about like a, a slower version of that or something like that? Because like right now I can use my mouse wheel and scroll through individual numbers to kind of finely tweak them, and then double click sets them back to zero. Uh, same thing with the. Same thing with this, but I think you're probably because you're still talking about, um, you know, kind of getting that that super dialed in fine tune um, aspect. So I think that that's that's something to kind of wait for. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's again, I'm not sure if that's something that they're working on specifically, but um, I know that they know they 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 saw the post for sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. The templates by Dugout and the Nameless Suite, e.g. Nordic Underbite, use their own mic. Can you tell us more about the uh, more about these? Because uh, I always start with these templated for my tone. Uh, what do you want to know? So as far as like, let's see. Do, 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 do. Let me 
group these together. Globals. Okay. Nope. Great. Okay. So let's pull up the artist dugout Nordic underbite. ORGM, okay. I'm not sure. Um, like, I don't know. I don't know the specific uh, question behind that. That, I mean, honestly, like, I've I've been really curious to get uh, Miko from uh, ML Sound Lab on the podcast as well. So that might be a question that I'll have to to put to him as far as where that came from, or maybe Doug might know as well. Um, but I'll have to bring that up up to them. Um, uh, Modern Vintage asks, are you going to do any interviews with others like inside the machine? Yes. Yes. So uh, I, I mentioned earlier, I there's probably um, it's probably a delay between the stream and, and when I'm reading these. But uh, yeah, so uh, up next, I'm going to have uh, Carson Slovak on. He's done like August Burns Red, Rivers Nile, and a ton of other people. Um, and he's super awesome. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um. But yeah, so I'll be doing more of that. And I'm really, really excited to do that. Um, a question to put to you guys, like, actually, it's like, who would you guys want to see on Inside the Machine? That's something that I'm kind of curious as well, because you guys, you guys obviously know who is out there that is popular. Like, you follow people that you're interested in. Like, who would you guys want to see me put questions to, you know, and, and kind of get a vibe from? So, um, yeah, let me know. Uh, Zach Manzano asks, uh, do you use different IR mic configurations when double tracking rhythm guitars? Um, oh, if you're talking about using like different IR and mic configurations for like a left and a right guitar, like using a, a 57 and 121 on the left and using a 906 and 184 on the right. Um, yeah, occasionally I might, I might do a little bit of that. And, and basically what you're doing with that is getting, um, you're actually going to get a better stereo signal between the two of those um, because you're not, you don't have two very, very similar tones on either side. So like if you were to test it by collapsing it into mono, like those two would still remain apart from each other, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so like occasionally I might do that or I might do a little bit of like subtle EQ moves to kind of boost in one area on the left and then boost in another area on the right. Um, so those are definitely things that you can do to get that better stereo image. Um, uh, Carol asks, uh, what do you think about AI EQ like Gullfoss? Um, so I haven't, I haven't watched this video on Gullfoss just yet, but I think, uh, I don't know. I'm actually kind of excited to, uh, to to check it out because I think that I think that AI is getting to a point where um, it's it's really really good, and there are certain things that AI can do that the human ear and brain just cannot. So I'm I'm really really curious to to check it out for myself because I think that it does have so much possibility, and I think that it's. I think that ultimately AI is the future in a lot of ways, and it's going to continue to take over a lot of elements of, you know, human industry. I think you know, that's, 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 that is literally just an inevitability. Um, so yeah, I think that is pretty cool. I, I definitely want to check it out though. Um, and hear what it does for, for, for myself. Um, I mean, like, honestly, if Dave Otero is speaking highly of it, I'm going to take his opinion because, uh, yeah, no, I'm not Dave Otero. Like, I don't have his credits. Like, that's a dude who is who is proven uh, time and time again to have like that engineer's ear um, and know the difference between something that is good and something that is you know hyped up or something that is you know maybe. Um, 
kind of looks cool or like he's beyond the bias that that some of us might fall for. So because um, I know that I've bought like a ton of plugins, a ton like I have more plugins in my folder that I don't use than I actually use nowadays. Um, and it's and I bought them because like. I thought they looked cool or I thought I liked maybe how they sounded. And then I actually got them in my session and it's like, oh, that actually wasn't wasn't what I was thinking or what I, wasn't what I was hoping for. So that's I mean, that is it's 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 pretty legit. So if Dave Otero says, you know, it's like, yeah, check out the Gulf Foss, like I'm going to do it. And obviously it's good for him. Like it's probably going to be good for me. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to check it out, though. Uh, let's see. Uh, Modern Vintage asks, uh, since the last q and I've really seen how I prefer plugins daily. Uh, seen how I prefer plugins daily. More time playing. Everything is recorded. No tinkering after making a preset, etc. Can you speak to when you hit this point? Oh, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as, okay, so like using, using, and he's talking, I think, about using plugins rather than analog gear. Um, because in, and, and a lot of that has to do with workflow. Um, there are a ton of engineers who still use analog gear like that and, and they make it work and it sounds amazing. Um, for my workflow, because of how fast I have to, I have, I have to turn around, um, you know, videos, especially for like neural DSP and stuff, like I'm going to do everything in the box because it's just, it's just quicker for me to do so. I think that I, I definitely don't take anything away from, uh, from, from analog because there is something to analog gear. Um, that is great. And again, and again, if it, if it works for your workflow, then awesome. And if it doesn't, then like, yeah, just go, go straight digital because like, I know, I know a bunch of engineers who go just strictly digital and make amazing sounding music. Um, to me, it's, it's all about the, I guess to me, it's more, it's all about how, how the engineer thinks and works rather than whether one is better than the other. If that makes sense. Like, a good engineer can make analog work easy and seamless. A good engineer can also make digital work easy and seamless. But like, you know, like I don't use a whole lot of, uh, I don't use analog stuff. Like I have, uh, I have a two notes torpedo, um, uh, torpedo live, but I don't ever use it anymore. Like, especially after having, you know, gotten into like the neural DSP products. Like I just don't need it because I don't need it because um, I already have great, great tone and everything in the box. Um, all right. Let's see. Luis asks, uh, what should be the best NTS plugin to nail Pantera tone? That's a really good question because I kind of want to do some Pantera stuff. I've been thinking about Pantera stuff recently. Um my first instinct is go with the NTS first um, and then try the nameless. That would be that would be my 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 uh, elimination. It's like I would try the NTS first and then I would go to the uh, the, the, the nameless afterwards because I don't think that the Pliny could could do it quite as well um, because Pantera's tone is fairly is really bright and the Pliny is, is a much darker uh, amp sim. Um, than you need for the Pantera stuff. So yeah, so that, that's that's what I would that's what I would try. Uh, Modern Vintage asks, uh, considering room noise, mic positioning, etc., can you explain when you do or would use amp cab mic over a plug-in at home? Um, it's a good question. I Okay, so th that is a good question because here's the thing like micing your cabinet is much more complicated than it is in like micing your cabinet in real life is much more complicated than dialing in your mics in your um in your plugins. Um because you do have to worry about phase issues when you're when you're micing your cabinet. Like it took me um 
it took me a good like half hour to an hour to dial in like the mic positions that I really liked um, because I was using a 57 and uh, a ribbon mic and I eventually got a tone that I really liked, but it was, it was time, you know, it was a lot of time to, to dial it in. Once I got it in, like I was pretty happy with it. Um, but I don't know if I will really ever actively go to, um, real cabinets while I have the option. Like if I'm going to like a legit studio and they have everything set up and ready to go, like that would be something different, but at home use, um, I probably would just stick to the plugins, um, for my own personal use, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay. Oh, great. Uh, Poncho, uh, Francisco Cresp, uh, he's one of the owners of Neural DSP. He stepped in, which is really awesome. Um, so the impulse of the dugout was created by Daniel Bergstrand, especially for the Nameless Suite. So that's the answer to the question earlier that I couldn't, uh, I couldn't answer. So thank you uh, for chiming in on that. I really appreciate that. Um, Z Woohoo asks... <laughs> Why does my nameless have way too much low end? The EQ on the amp doesn't seem to help. So there's a couple of different things you could do uh, about that. Um, so the grind, oh, let's see. Well, okay. So let's, let's say I pull this up. The grind pedal is one thing that's definitely going to tighten up that low end tone because this actually cuts quite a lot from the low end. Um, then you move over to the the head, and if you back off of gain two, that's also going to take a little bit of the low end out, and then bump just gain one up to make up for that uh, that lost gain. So that's those those are a couple of things you could do if you also want pulling out the MVC knob. Kind of makes it a little bit brighter uh, to my ear, so that that also kind of improves that low end low end uh, tubbiness. Um, Cause yeah, once you get to like a seven and eight string guitar, like that low end is problematic. So the grind is made specifically to do that. The hex drive does do that a little bit, but like the grinds, that's what that's there for. Um, so that that would be my be my recommendation to start. Uh, and then beyond that, if you're still not happy with the low end, um, EQ, compression, multi band compression, something like that. So like if I was to if say if I wasn't happy with the way uh, this guitar was sounding, let's go ahead and just solo this one. So. So. Okay, so that's so this is this is a preset that I made uh, a little while back. So I got the grind pedal on, but let's turn that off. Let's back. Oh yeah, it's gains all the way up. So Okay, so I got this to a point where like I'm pretty happy with the overall tone, but there is a little bit too much low end to the guitar. So I would just take my my EQ. And that's that's pretty much all that I would uh, all that I would do. 
is I just took a wide cue. I bumped it up so that I could hear this, the specific areas that I was having problems with, centered around 165 hertz and dipped just a couple of dB. And then I pulled up the uh, a, a high pass to about 50 hertz, but that's more just to be exacting. Like when, when, it, when it becomes to a mix, like this is not a lot that you can hear um, naturally, but like by the time you get to the end mix, like this is stuff that starts to build up uh, overall. So... All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Modern Vintage asks, how long does it take for Neural to go from amp on the desk to final release? Uh, I don't, I don't know, actually. Um, and I, I know they turn it around fairly fast, but um, I, I, I couldn't answer that. Um, Tyler Britton, thanks for remembering me from the group, man. Yeah, not a problem, man. I mean, like, that's 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 my home now. You know, I get to hang out there. I get to talk with you guys. You know, it's like I enjoy my time there. Um, let's see. So Modern Vintage asks, uh, considering where we are with plugins and the future, it seems like selling some tube amps for great expensive guitars uh, is worth it. Thoughts in hindsight and knowing what's to come. I mean, you're not wrong. Um, like, I think that, you know, tube amps, hardware is going to become less of a thing as as digital processing gets better, um, as these plugins continue to get better and more accurate, like there's going to be less call for it, but there's always going to be a market for those things. Um, and again, I think it just depends on your specific workflow because there's some people who just get like, they just get that great tone from, from an amp. And it's like, that's, there's something kind of like, I'm not, I don't know if I could, I would call it romantic, but there's something about having like the, the analog stuff. That's like pretty cool. Like, I mean, I have my Mesa boogie dual rectifier. It's sitting uh, next to me um, on the floor. It doesn't get used, but like, I don't know. I just kind of like having it. Like it, there's also, there's also a little bit of something sentimental about it too, because like I bought that when I was a teenager and like, it was like my first like real amp that I got for myself and I bought it new which was stupid. Um, but you know, it's like, it's, it's a little bit sentimental and it's a little bit like, you know, I like having it just in case I ever do a gig where like, I need something big and heavy and loud. Um, but like, I, I do find myself using it way less than I ever used to. Um, cause eventually like I used to be able to do like band stuff with it. I used to like hang out with that all the time. But, uh, no, it's a, it's, I, I, I think that it's probably best to invest in the string department, get you nice guitars, get your nice basses, um, because the, the, the digital world is just ramping up so heavily. Um, yeah. And I think it's, I think it's worth, it's a worthwhile investment. So you would generally just have like, you know, a really good source, which is your guitars, um, you know, it's like I, after playing this comparison base, like I want more comparison in my life. Like they're so cool. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I think you're not, you're definitely not wrong on that. Um, and I probably will end up doing the same soon at some point. Uh, let's see. Modern Vintage asks, uh, I want to try plugins, cabs. Any particular power amp you like best? Heard solid state is best for least coloring versus a tube amp power section. Yes, 100%. Um, so, like, I got to use the uh, Dark Glass Microtubes 500, uh, which sounded great. Um, but I've also seen the Seymour Duncan. Um, Seymour Duncan has one. What is it called? Um uh, Seymour, Seymour Duncan power amp. Like somebody in the chat room posted it up. Yeah. The, uh, the Seymour Duncan power stage 170, which is like 400 bucks, I think. Um, 
but I, I, you know, I saw that that was, that was posted in the page and I thought that was a pretty good idea. Um, because then you don't have to worry about like something big and bulky because like, you know, some people will say like, oh, well I got my, uh, uh, solid state Randall, uh, whatever, something or other, you know, whatever. Um, they'll have like a full head and I'm like, well, my thought is like, you should get the most compact thing you can because the idea of it is like, I want to minimize my rig as much as possible. Like having the micro t tubes and my, my uh, interface was awesome. Like it's so light, I could just pack it into my backpack and then just go. Um, so yeah, so something like that would be, would be great. So yeah, definitely. And definitely solid state, um, is best because yeah, the tube amps wouldn't get you the same one-to-one -one representation for sure. Uh, Rodney Altenbaugh puts in a lot of hearts. Love you too, bro. Um, <laughs> he, said, he ran out of hearts. All right. Um, uh, gotcha. Okay, Luis says, uh, asks, are we going to see any Mesa amps recreation in a neural plugin soon? Um, I don't, I don't think we are. Nothing that's going to be explicitly Mesa, um, for sure. Um, because I'm not on the development side of that, so I couldn't tell you one way or the other. Like I know, I know the plugins that are coming up and what these artists kind of use, but I can't, I can't speak to that. Um, see, Zach asks, uh, do I need to click my phase button when dual tracking, or is it just panning left to right fine as is? Uh, when you're dual tracking, yeah, don't worry about cl uh, clicking the phase button. That that's not a that's not a big deal. So, um, the only time that you'll ever have to worry about phase is when you have like. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah. Here's, here's a good instance. Um, how I set up. Um, so I actually, so I recorded two, uh, two mics for this live, live setup that I did. Um, and I used a trick that I learned from Nolly, which was, um, get your first mic in a position that sounds good and then move the second mic to a point where, um, okay, let me back up actually. So like, he, what he does is he sends um, pink noise through his amp, sets up his mic in a position that sounds good. Um, and I used a 57 for my first mic. And then for the second mic, put it in a position where the phase cancellation is greatest and then hit your phase flip button. So that way it, it becomes in phase. So like you'll see like this section right here. Actually, wait. Oh, sorry. That's. Am I on? Am I on my Pro Tools screen now? Yes, I am. Okay, so if you look here, um, like so, this is completely out of phase. So if I were to solo this, like if I solo it, solo it right now, um, let me get this in the center. <laughs> Okay, cool. Uh, and I have this uh, this EQ with a phase button flipped. So I unflip it and it sounds like. Ugh. Ugh. It sounds like hot garbage. <laughs> so, but generally that's the time when I would use the, uh, the, the phase flip. Um, but generally, as long as as long as you look at this uh, this waveform and you can kind of see that it's, you know, if it's running in the same direction, like if I were to, you know, if if these were flipped mirror and were matching the other one, you wouldn't have to worry about it. So that that that's when you would use the the phase invert uh, button. Uh... Let's see. So DMC guitars. Uh, hi, Danny from Germany here. Uh, what about what about the integrated pedals from Nameless and NTS Suite? Is the hex just useful in passive pickups and grind for active? Uh, checked both together was good, or is it? <laughs> it's forbidden. No, I wouldn't say that it's forbidden. No, I mean like to, I've I've always I've always thought you know well do what sounds best. Um, so let's, so let's do this. Let's, let's. Yeah. 
and I actually wouldn't think of it as like uh, passive pickups for the hex drive and active pickups for the grind. I think that it has more to do with the EQ curve and saturation that they give the signal because they both have very different characteristics. Um, and you could use either active or passive pickups on either one of these. Um, like, uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm not gonna worry about that right now. But basically, if you were to if you were to put like a a flat level, like if you were put put like white noise through through the amplifier, and or not just through the amplifier, but like if you were to disengage the head, disengage the impulse response section, and just turn on one of the pedals, um, and put white noise through it, you could see the EQ curve and how it's how it's affecting the the white noise. Um, and basically, like, the grind does this dip around, I think it's somewhere around, like, like 80 hertz up to, like, 300 or something like that. It really dips a lot because this is built for a 7 or 8 string pe uh, uh, guitar. Um, and it's meant to deal with that overwhelming bassiness that those lower end strings uh, provide. Um, and then the hex drive does this really nice, I think the grind also does like a, a high end boost as well. Um, but the hex drive does this really great, like upper mid, uh, in mid range boost that I, that I tend to particularly like that's around like a thousand or uh, 2000 Hertz or something like that. Um, I would, I would, I would have to pull up the actual pictures for you guys to remember exactly, um, exactly what they were but yeah so like it's more about the eq curve how they're affecting the signal rather than an active pickup versus pa passive pickup situation so um hopefully that that kind of answers your question as far as using them in tandem like i think that that actually would be kind of kind of cool to be able to i mean you probably would have to back off the level on one or both to get it to sound not mushy but let's Okay, so let's pretend that didn't happen. All right, so um, if we were to use both of these in tandem, let me try. I'll I'll try and see if I can get this to sound sound good with both of them. That sounds okay. I think that I I generally tend to prefer. Um, I generally tend to prefer the hex drives kind of warm, upper mid range boost to my ear, but that doesn't sound bad at all. Again, I think that it it just comes down to. Um, uh, I think that it comes down to, whatever sounds best to your ear, go with. You know, like I think that. It, yeah. No, that's it. Just you know, go with go with what sounds best. I mean, don't be afraid to try out weird things, because you never know what the end result's gonna be. You know, it's like if you heard from one of the one of the guys, like, oh, never turn on hex drive and grind at all together, like, and then all of a sudden you tried it, like, and it sounds amazing. Like, why did you listen to the person in the first place? Like, do experimentations, kind of mess around with it, because um, you might be might be you know, you might be surprised at what you get. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. It's 2.03, so we'll start wrapping up pretty quick. Um, let's put that last call in for questions while I answer these next few. Uh, let's see. 
Modern Vintage asks, uh, how big of a field difference do you notice between amps and plugins considering load box, IR, WAS, two notes, etc.? cetera? Uh, it seems any difference, uh, it seems any difference is lost in the other boxes. Um, the only difference that I ever notice between playing with like a, a, an actual amp and, you know, plugins and stuff like that, or acoustically, like it does make my playing a little bit different. Um, which is why last week, um, I think it was Zach who asked me about playing acoustically versus playing with a, with an amp sim. And I know that there's, there's, uh, one producer in mind in particular who says, you know, make sure the DI or make sure they, they play to the DI and the DI is clean. Um, but I actually think that you should play through an amp sim at least. Um, but that's, that's really the only difference that I ever notice is that it just makes my playing a little bit different. Um, because I like can hear the feedback directly rather than guessing what it is. So like I used to, I used to play and record, um, um, just acoustically and just to a click track. Um, but I realized that was messing up with my playing because my, my right hand settled in a place that wasn't quite right for, um, for, for real world guitar playing through an amp. Um, like when I got back on an amp, like my hand was choking off all the notes and I'm like, I can't like, I have to move my, my right hand back now, um, in order to, to, uh, to, to, to get that tone back. Um, so that's about it. It's just the playability of it um, and how you react to the sound. That's that's the only th thing that I ever notice. Um... <laughs> Tyler Britton says, go ahead, Stephen. You can call it romantic. We all know you've had a few candlelit dinners with a few 5150s and Mesa boogies here or there. I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. Uh, let's see. Uh, Modern Vintage asks, how do I record DI with UA Apollo Pro Tools for cycling tones presets later like you did last week? Thanks. Um, so a, a good DI box and then just record the track and then just go for it. Um, so like the setup that I did, like the, the so the setup that I did for the live amps, I wanted to make sure that I had a DI ready just in the off case that I needed it. Oops. Um, so like this track here at the top, that's my DI. That's my clean, my clean signal. Yeah. So that's just my clean signal. So then I can just start pulling up plugins and then just go from there. Um, and then like, if I really want to get like super nitty gritty on the comparisons, I'll just duplicate the track out and then load different plugins and then start soloing between them and start comparing and contrasting the tones. Uh, let's see. Okay, cool. Um, Let's see. Modern Vintage asks, how and why did the Fortin and Neural collaboration start? Uh, also, why did Neural choose the Nameless as the first amp? I think I'm going to let Doug answer that question. So, uh, again, I'll have I'll have Doug on the stream and uh, and he'll answer the question for you guys, because that's that's not exactly my story to tell, I think. Um, and I think that he, he just can tell it far better than I can. So. Uh, let's see. Nick asks, uh, what did you do to the gain knob to make it larger? Um, I don't know what you mean by larger. I'm, I'm guessing that you were talking about this particular section. Let's turn that off. Um, larger, I mean, there's, there's a couple of different thing, a couple of different things that I did, um, while dialing in this tone. Uh, one thing that I really love to do is pulling the, um, uh, the, the master volume control knob out and like just slamming that up between like, uh, eight and 10. 
that that's that's normally my my position because what happens is this master volume control is set before the um, the the tone stack, which is the bass, treble, and, and uh, middle. Um, so these knobs actually end up getting fed the signal from the master volume control, which ends up getting a lot more saturation and mid range tone uh, out of your out of your head. So like um, so let's. Yeah. All right, so now if I plug that back in. Sorry about your ears. So yeah, so you get this really nice kind of saturation from pushing that that master volume control. So that I think that might be what you're what you're referring to. Um, I also messed around with the output knob just to make sure that it was level with what uh, was playing earlier. So okay, uh, do do do. Uh, let's see, DMC Guitars, Danny, if I remember correctly. Uh, Danny asks, uh, will there be price drops uh, till Black Friday so that what? Uh, I don't, no, no. I, I can pretty confidently say I, I don't think there's going to be any price drops or sales. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't think you're going to be, I don't think you're going to be. Honestly, man, like, <laughs> like even if I bought this like at full price and then they did like a sale like two weeks later, I wouldn't be mad because like this, these plugins are worth, are worth every penny. Like I'm getting so much mileage out of these things. Like they are everything that I need in a guitar amp sim that I could possibly want. Like, um, I, th I think it was, a, it was a matter that I actually like brushed on the first or second week where I, I wasn't quite sure. Um, oh, did I do that whole example with just my face cam? Dang it. I messed up. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so, um, they are making stuff that I don't know that I need, which I think is really, really cool because I think that neural DSP are such forward thinkers that they are trying to trying to get you products that you don't even know that you need. Like I didn't think that I would need parallax and then they sent it to me and I, and I, I will use nothing but that from now on. Like, I think it's one of the best amp, uh, base amp simulators ever. Like it's so simple, so easy to dial in. And I, and like, if you had had asked me, like if neural had come to me and said like, what do you think we should do? Another guitar amp or she, do you think we should do this parallax thing? I'd be like, do a guitar amp. Like, obviously you got dark glass. But then they come out with the parallax, and I'm like, "What? This thing is awesome! It's the best!" Like, and and I think that that's what makes them a really, really great company is that they are, they're trying to make the user experience so much better for you guys. They're trying to make the products like the most stellar thing you didn't know you needed, um, and it, and it's awesome. Like the, 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 the Pliny is a good example of that. Like, um, I knew of Pliny before that, before I started with that Ampson, but now that I like, now that I've used it, it's like, that's, that's most of my guitar tone right there. Like hands down, I wouldn't have thought that that guy would produce something like that, that I would use so much or so frequently, but it's there and I use it constantly. Um, but yeah, so that that's that's generally the way that I feel about them, and that that's that's I'll stick to it. Uh, all right. Anyway, so getting back to uh, Tyler Britton, good answer. Yes, I, you know, a gentleman, gentleman, uh, don't don't tell, just something or other. I don't know. I, I can't remember the the thing. Um, uh, Modern Vintage asks first thing you adjust to brighten up the NTS. Uh, let's see. That's a good question. Why don't I just, uh, show you. Let's see. Let's go and pull 
this up, sampling. Make sure that I am looking at my screen. I am looking at my screen, huzzah. I did things right this time, guys. Okay, so first, first off, that is that is super flubby. Um, let's see if I can brighten it up first with an impulse response. Yeah, let's. let's try it out. Okay, so that sounded pretty cool. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to the yeah. Let's let's try some like again. I like the hex drive, so I'm gonna try that first. Okay, so, so you got the grind, you got the hex drive, and I'm sure like you saw me kind of going back and forth between the two because the hex drive has a bit more forwardness on that uh, forward mid range that I like, but it's not cutting quite as much of the bass that I that I like. So, uh, let's move now to the head. Okay, so that's that's generally how I dial in uh, the NTS. Uh, cool. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, so Nick Nick says, okay, I've uh, I've had the nameless for a while, and I never knew you could pull out the gain knob. Yes, yes. So the master volume control is a push pull knob. Uh, and it, 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 when you pull it out, it actually gives an additional uh, stage of distortion, which is pretty cool. Um, that's probably one of my favorite features uh, of that of that section. So, uh, do, 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 do. all right. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so you know, so you see, so you guys have a couple of questions about the upcoming plugins, which I can't talk about. You know, like that's unfortunately that's that's not something that I'm allowed to. Um, I know that you guys are gonna be stoked on it when they come out. Like that. That's literally all I can say is that like I'm, I cannot wait. 
to get these things under my paws and I'm so stoked on them. Uh, but, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so like I, I, you know, I, unfortunately I can't talk about that. Um, so you guys are just going to have to wait and find out it's going to be good. So let's see if there are no other, uh, no other questions, we can start kind of wrapping this up. So, um, so modern vintage says, thanks for doing this in real time and, and actually working it out. Uh, most would say increased trouble helps me understand and how to use the plugin more efficiently. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Um, it's my pleasure, you know, like that, that's being able to show like the process is, is half the battle, honestly. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Cool, cool. All right, so let's. I'll I'll go ahead and and start wrapping up. So, I definitely want to thank all of you guys who came out to the stream, and I want to thank all of you guys who who added all the questions and everything. Um, this was a lot of fun, and I do want to, I do want to put it out. Um, I'll be making a post in the uh, the Neural DSP users group because I want to, um not just doing the Q and A's, but if you guys wanted me to go in depth on a particular topic that isn't specifically neural DSP plugin related, like mixing techniques, drums, bass, composition, stuff like that. Um, I would love to do that. So that way I can have sort of like a set, like half an hour of, of things to kind of like go through. Like if you guys want me to do something like that, um, Again, hit me up. Um, you can always contact me, Stephen at neuraldsp.com. My Instagram handle is at the real Steve Z, or you can hit me up on Facebook, Stephen Ward, um, W A R D. So, with that being said, with that being said, thank you all so much, and as always, I'll see you in the next video later on.